my name is Judy and I'm an educator here at Washington Crossing Historic Park. Today we're going to be talking about quill pens. Now a quill pen is basically a writing instrument made out of a bird feather. And the quill of the feather is the long thin piece that runs down the middle of the feather, kind of like the spine of the feather. You can make a writing instrument out of any large feather. Basically it has to be big enough that you can hold the quill the way you would hold a pen or a pencil. And you would take a knife and cut a sharp angle to make a point. So that technically is a pen, however, it's not a very good pen. The colonists brought the knowledge of how to make good quill pens with them when they emigrated to the American colonies from Europe. And to make a good pen is really an art form requiring heating the quill and molding it then you would also, in, in addition to cutting the angle, you're going to cut a slit in the top, scoop out the back, and flatten the tip to create an instrument that is going to give you a good writing surface. Uh, they say that Thomas Jefferson actually kept a herd of geese so that he always had enough feathers for his writing. And as we know, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence with a quill pen. Now historians say that he actually used a silver tip on his pen, but when it came time for the other delegates to sign the Declaration of Independence, they did not want that newfangled invention. They wanted a real quill pen. Now if we're talking about quill pens in the 18th century at the time of the Revolutionary War, we're really talking about communication. Communication is very different today. We have electronic devices like cell phones, tablets, and computers that can allow us to communicate very quickly. But in colonial times, the only way to get in touch with someone far away was to write a letter. And of course, they did it with a quill pen. They had lots of challenges. Um, for one thing, can you imagine coming to a strange country and not knowing what kind of birds might be there to make your quill pens? They say that goose, squan, and turkey were the preferred birds, but luckily when the colonists got to America, there were a lot of other large native birds that they could use. Paper was an issue because uh, it mostly was manufactured in England and had to be imported. It was very expensive, and then the English started taxing it, especially the Stamp Act, which made it too expensive for many people to afford. Ink also was quite an issue, same as paper, it was expensive, it started to be taxed, and then, of course, the American colonists decided to ban the import of British goods. When that happened, basically the supply of paper and ink dried up and the colonists didn't have any more. I think that ink is uh, an example of how uh, industrious and ingenuous our American forefathers were, because they figured out how to make their own ink using natural materials like uh, flowers, uh, berries, and nuts. In particular, the black walnut tree is native to the eastern coast of the United States, and the colonists figured out how to make ink out of black walnuts. They would boil it down with a variety of other uh, things like vinegar, alcohol, uh, gum arabic, and some herbs and they made a very dark ink that was so permanent that there are documents written in the 1700s that we can still read today. I think that the story of ink tells the story of how smart uh, and good that our forefathers were, and it tells the story of how we have communicated down through the ages. Thank you so much for visiting with us today.